Okay, so we'll get we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon or good morning to everyone who's who's joined us here um, uh, for this session. Uh, thank you so much for attending, and thanks especially to Dr. Alicia Apollo, who's joined us, and she'll be talking about uh, her uh, her presentation title is Wound Cleanser Investigation: Which Cleansers Aren't Getting the Job Done? So that sounds incredibly enticing, and we're all eager to to hear more. Um, so just a little bit of uh, housekeeping. After the event, we will have a, a Q&A. So if you have any questions at all for Dr. Rapallo, please find the chat icon and put your questions into the chat for this particular call. And we'll try and get through as many as we can. So with that, I'll turn this over to Dr. Rapallo, who is an associate professor and director of the Comprehensive Wound Healing Center and Hyperbarics at Northwell Health. And we're so excited to have you here today, Dr. Rapallo. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, Monique. And you know, many of us are challenged with the same question every day. Which cleansers should we use and which cleansers aren't getting the job done? Next slide. Uh, you can uh, review this disclaimer. And um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the, the goals of wound cleansing is a vital component of wound care that removes harmful materials on the wound surface, including bacteria, to optimize, obviously, healing. And the goals also include removing not only the harmful form materials, but also minimizing trauma to the healthy tissue and enhancing the visualization of the wound bed and the wound edge. Next slide. But there's many factors to consider. And some of the factors to consider in addition to the wound characteristics of the bed itself um, are important in deciding how to clean wounds. The first one is, is which cleansing technique is appropriate? Should we soak wounds? As many of us do, we often soak with either an antiseptic or we soak with saline, which is the standard of care, typically 10 to 15 minutes a wound with a daily dressing change, a wet to damp dressing or scrub a wound, uh, which is typically 30 seconds to one minute or irrigate the wound for better hygiene. And what is the patient's tolerance for treatment? We want to optimize the removal of debris and form matter in the wound bed while minimizing the pain. And again, which wound cleanser is optimal? So now you're faced with better hygiene. You wanna look at the wound and decide on what type of wound cleanser Many commercial cleansers are available, but which one is best suited for the wound? Next slide. So in order to evaluate cleansing um, efficacy at the point of care, fluorescent imaging with the moleculite enables clinicians to visualize fluorescence from bacteria and tissue at the point of care. As you can appreciate here, there are some images that were captured before and after cleansing. The red and the cyan and it's, it's often, um, there is a need for uh, further tests, for further evaluation and, um, and to assess a patients with this device. Um, it does require some education, but in brief, the red um, is bacteria that you can appreciate grossly on these images. And the cyan, which is indicated with the red arrows uh, is, uh, is Pseudomonas originosa. This also shows that there are elevated loads of bacteria greater than 10 to the fourth colony forming units per gram that are, that are present on the wound bed. Again, the green fluorescence that you might appreciate in the picture here is just the matrix components of the tissue. Um, but you can see by with the naked eye that the wound bed itself doesn't look too bad. But when you fluoresce it with the moleculite device, you can appreciate that there are significant areas of bacteria. On the left side of the screen where the white arrows uh, demonstrate the, the redness, um, you can appreciate not only is there slough and necrotic tissue in the wound bed itself, but the peri wound needs to be addressed. As well as on the right side, you can also appreciate that the, the wound bed doesn't look too bad. A little area of maceration, a little bit of fibrinous exudate, but then under fluorescence, you can really appreciate that this, this, the cyanin that's indicated by the red arrows 
um, where the bacteria is uh, significantly um, uh, targeted. And so this, this definitely tells you that the patient needs, needs to be addressed at a point of care. Additionally, a lot of those areas around the wound at the wound edges where you can see that concentration of bacteria was really correlative to clinical examination where the patient elicited significant pain to this wound that doesn't, that doesn't look too bad, it looks pretty benign. Next slide. So in evaluating this cleansing efficacy, I looked at prospectively an observational study of 27 patients. In the demographics of my patients, the average age is almost 70 years with predominantly being male gender. And predominantly, I, I investigated this using uh, this device with um, the ideology of venous ulcerations in the predominant population of almost 85%. The average wound duration was about nine months. So these patients had these wounds for a, a prolonged period of time before I was able to see them in the wound center. And the average wound area you can appreciate is almost 15 centimeters. And so we looked at different techniques like 10 minute soaks, 30 second scrubs, uh, and we evaluated different wound cleansers, uh, soap and water, saline, uh, sodium hypochlorite, the family of cleansers of them, uh, probidone iodine, uh, polyhexamethylene biguanide, and acetic acid, which are very commonly used in, in uh, wound care. Next slide. So which cleansing technique is the most effective in reducing the bacterial burden? Is it a soak for 10 to 15 minutes, a vigorous scrub, 30 seconds to one minute, or irrigation? Let's take, let's take a look and find out. So you can see here, again, another venous leg ulcer on the left-hand side. Clinically, it's not impressive, right? A little bit of drainage in the patient here, and now under fluorescent imaging, you can appreciate in the white arrows of the peri wound and at the wound edges that there is significant fluorescence of red, indicating a significant amount of bacterial load. After a 10 minute soak, you can appreciate there's not much difference, even with a dilute sodium hypochlorite. But after vigorous scrubbing just for 30 seconds, and that's singing happy birthday twice, that you can appreciate that there's a significant difference in the peri wound bacteria and the edges of the wound. Next slide. Again, another venous leg ulcer. This is the medial malleolus. Uh, you can, uh, the white area that you appreciate here is, is really just um, uh, a zinc oxide to help with the peri wound integrity because the patient had a significant amount of drainage. And here you can see that the white arrows indicate cyan, so the bacteria. And after a 10 minute soak with sodium hypochlorite, there's not much of a change. However, after a bigger scrub, you can see the difference of the, the cyan that's significantly reduced. So which cleansing technique is more effective in reducing the bacterial burden? A vigorous scrub tends to, is, is the best for at least 30 seconds, appears to produce the greatest reduction in cyan or red fluorescence on images compared to soak. So which cleanser is more effective in removing the bacterial uh, bio burden? And this is one of the things that I was always challenged with, which cleanser should I use? Should I use saline, sodium hypochlorite, family of cleansers, povidone iodine, polyhexamethylene biguanide, or does it depend on the patient in the wound? So in this patient, we use saline, as many people do. And you can see that uh, this is also another leg ulcer. And the arrow, white arrows that are indicated uh, demonstrate uh, red, which is a, um, which is a significant elevated bacterial load. And after a 30 second scrub, you can see with saline, there's a reduction in that bacteria, especially at the peri wound. Next slide. And here's a patient that has also uh, leg ulcer, medial malleolus, 
um, with the history of venous stasis, as you can appreciate the hyperpigmentation of, of the peri wound, but a lot of necrotic tissue because this patient had had the wound for a prolonged period of time. And the uh, below the subcutaneous tissues, uh, you can appreciate um, that there is significant red in the picture denoted by the noted by the uh, white arrows. And after a 30 second scrub with saline, you can see the reduction. However, it's not completely um, removed. Again, with polyhexamethylene biguanide, in this wound, the patient had significant pain associated with it. And so sometimes you may opt to, to just reduce your debridement or scrubbing technique. However, in it's such a benign wound, looking wound with a little bit of exudate around the wound and in the peri wound, some, uh, some biofilm, this wound actually exhibits significant red, which is elevated bacterial loads in the wound that you cannot appreciate with the naked eye. And even after a 30 second scrub, it, there was a residual effect, but it was significantly reduced with polyhexamethylene by guanide. Again, another patient that had peri wound, although they can't elicit exactly where the pain is, but he was able to describe that the wound had significant pain and he had been suffering from this wound for over nine months duration. And under fluorescence, you can appreciate that there's these bright cyan lights, and this is indicative of uh, pseudomonas. And after a 30 second scrub with sodium hypochlorite, it had significantly reduced. Again, this is with COVID on iodine, uh, a wound that you may not appreciate any bacteria just by examining it with the naked eye. And then again, there's areas of red uh, to the peri wound in which the last slide demonstrates a, after a 30 second scrub, a significant reduction. Next slide. So which cleanser is more effective in removing the bacterial? content. It really depends upon the patient and the wound. Specialized wound cleansers are recommended, but not probably saline. But each wound environment is unique. Real-time information on bacterial burden is needed to determine the efficacy of selected wound cleansers. So here's a patient with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And you can see that, again, um, the, the wound appears to have a uh, significant amount of maceration in the peri wound. And there's this, there, it's very uh, mildly erythematous as well, secondary to the venous stasis disease. But under fluorescence, you can, it appears a glowing white cyan imaging. And this is indicative of pseudomonas. And this is, pseudomonas increases the propensity for the wound to form biofilm developing infections and evade antibiotics. Efficient removal of the pseudomonas in wounds is critical to prevent these complications from arising. So we use sodium hypochlorite, again, in another patient. And the white arrows denote the actual bacteria. And after a 10 minute soak with sodium hypochlorite, you can see that there's not much of a difference. But after a 30 second scrub, there's a reduction in, in the, um, the amount. Again, we, we decided to change our practice into debriding more because we found that this might be more efficacious to remove a lot of this um, necrotic tissue, especially at the peri wound edges where most people forget to debrid. Next slide. This was another case for provenone iodine where we looked at um, the application of this. And when you apply it, and we don't generally use it in a lot of our patients, but um, in this case, we use it to test this cleanser against the wound. So you, in this case, we, we applied the iodine and then uh, let it dry uh, to, to assure that the patient had the, um, the 
had the efficacy in the iodine itself and then thoroughly washed it uh, afterwards. And you can see before with the, uh, with the soak and then after the scrub with a significant reduction. And again, with polyhexamethylene biguanide on another patient, and this is a little bit of a deeper wound, and uh, you can appreciate the edges demonstrating the not only necrotic tissue, but cyan, and the reduction after a 30-second scrub. So things that you might want to consider. Some cleansers, like pink chlorhexidine and iodine, they produce a tint or darkening that may influence the interpretation of the fluorescent images. And then, so you wanna make sure that you wash and irrigate the wound thoroughly afterwards when you, if you apply this cleanser. Prior to imaging and after using these types of cleansers, you wanna wash the, the wound well. And discoloration of the skin like tattoos may also influence the fluorescent signals on images. So the key points are that vigorous scrubbing for at least 30 seconds produces the greatest reduction in cyan or red fluorescence on images compared to a 10 minute soak. Specialized wound cleansers like not saline, but are recommended and each wound environment is unique. Real time information on bacterial bile burden using the moleculite is needed to determine the efficacy of selected wound cleansers. I'll take any questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Arapalo. That, that was a great overview of your study. Thanks very much. So we do have some questions that are coming in and um, not surprisingly, they're, they're mostly focused around uh, why uh, other cleansers weren't included in this particular study because there, there's so many on the market and it's important to do these types of tests. So do you plan to expand this to, to look at, at other cleansers in the future or increase your sample size? I do actually, this was just more of a pilot trial. Um, and we were looking at cleansers that people might be using whether it's in the hospital or in routinely in practice or maybe even the field or what the patients might be using. So I was more interested in the efficacy of the cleanser but I found that really it's the, the proper hygiene is the most important. Okay. And um, someone's asking, when you say you vigorously scrubbed the wound, uh, what did you actually use to do that vigorous scrubbing? So we use uh, gauze and certainly there are other types of um, applications that you can apply on the wound to vigorously scrub the wound, but we just used what commonly most people would use. Either the patient would be using or um, someone in an outpatient practice might be using to wash the wounds. So it was just a, uh, a gauze that we, we used. Did that cause the patients any pain? You've mentioned pain with these patients. Uh, were any considerations given to how pain would be managed during this scrubbing? So we, uh, in our wound center, we apply uh, lidocaine on, on the wounds. And so uh, the patients will have an application of lidocaine before the scrubbing. So often they don't really, um, they, they tolerate the scrubbing much better with the application of lidocaine beforehand. Okay. And then another question, if the wound has an area of granulation tissue, would you still recommend scrubbing that wound or maybe that region of the wound? Yes, it targeted. Uh, and this is why the moleculite helps so much is that instead of scrubbing or the, the needing to debride the wound, and I found that my practice had changed since I used this device, that I could target the, the patient's care more effectively. Uh, in other words, I could know where to debride. I would know where to scrub a little bit more in, in some of the patients in, the, uh, in using the device. So it targeted my therapy. All right, and I see just one more question coming in. Nope, 
Okay, I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm managing different different technology applications here. So I think that's uh, I think we've gotten through everyone's questions, and I thank you all for joining, and especially thank Dr. Apollo for taking us all through this uh, this work. Uh, for those of you who are who are leaving the call, please be sure to um, to go to the Moleculite booth with any information for any information you're looking for, uh, and there's definitely a team there and resources there to download uh, on this particular technology. Thank you so much.